Hello everybody, Board Game Lawyer here. Welcome to the special edition of my channel. I've decided that instead of play, uh, playing some Marvel Champions today, I just talk a little bit about Marvel Champions. And primarily the subject that I'm going to talk about this evening has to do with the uh, most recent heroes in the game. Speaking of the X-Wave. So, so far uh, to date, this is November the 12th, 2023. Uh, we've had 12 heroes that have been released to us to play with in the game, and I absolutely enjoy every single one of them. In fact, they're probably my favorite heroes in the game. This has been an exceptionally good wave of uh, Marvel Champions. Really happy with it. So I thought what I'd do, just briefly, this is completely unscripted, just talk about uh, which ones that I, just kind of the order in which I like the heroes. That's... I hate to call this a tier list, but uh, I am going to talk about the level of enjoyment that I have playing with different uh, heroes in the game. And again, uh, just just to let you know, I'm a big fan of the game, and I like all the heroes in the game. There's not any that I really dislike, but you know, it's a game, so and it's it's various heroes. You're going to like some more than you like others. Some of them match your play style a little bit better than others. And so I'm just going to talk about these X uh, heroes only. And so I thought I would do it in descending order, so or ascending order. So I'm going to talk about probably my my least favorites first, and then work my way up to my favorites. So I really hate to put anybody my least favorite, but I just had to pick one, and so I decided to go with Anna Marie, who is Rogue, the Rogue hero uh, of the twelve. She's probably my least favorite. And I can talk a little bit about that. Um, I like the fact that uh, she has this uh, touched uh, upgrade that, that goes on to her at the beginning of the game. It's a setup. Uh, set your touched upgrade aside and then you add it to your, uh, your hero after the game begins. But I guess one of the things that I... I kind of struggle with because mainly I play um, in solo is that one of the abilities on her touched ability has to do with uh, playing with multiple players which I love actually I like playing this game two-player and I've played several two-player games as of lately but really the first couple of years of playing Marvel Champions I played solo and that's kind of my jam is to play Marvel Champions solo and I but I do immensely like playing it two-player and Rogue is a lot more fun Playing in two-player, I'd rather that my my uh, my uh, teammate play with Rogue because you know it's like I said, she's probably my least favorite of the twelve. Um, so that's mainly the reason why is just because of um, feeling like I'm being somewhat limited, even though I'm not. She's a powerful hero. Two 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 is great stats on a hero, um, but. Uh, yeah, just uh, I, if I had to pick my least favorite, it would probably be Rogue. Not saying anything bad about Rogue, I really like her. So I'm just going to set her aside for now. Just set her right over here. Uh, let's see how I'm going to do this. Like I said, this is completely unscripted. Kind of last minute. Um, I'll just stack them off to the side. How's that? Yeah, and I'll zoom in there. Okay, my next one is going to be Kitty Pride, who is Shadow Cat. Uh, she's another one that you put a uh, mass form upgrade into play. It's a set of, kind of a set of, set that aside, put that form into play. Flip your mass form upgrade. You can do this a limit of once per round. Um, again, don't like don't dislike any of these heroes. There's, there's some that I like more than others. And so Shadow Cat, she uh, has nine health. Uh, I've played with Shadow Cat both in solo and in multiplayer. I think I like it in multiplayer better, Shadow Cat, for some reason. It just seems like it's it's been a better experience in multiplayer to play with Shadow Cat. So uh, not so much solo. Um, and then um, maybe it's just a fiddly uh, feeling that I get. Now, now there's, there's other heroes that I like that I like flipping forms. But this one is just flip, flip, flip constantly. It, it feels just a little bit more fiddly, and I'm not probably, um, 
I, I probably don't play her well enough because of that. I, I kind of miss those things. So yeah, Shadow Cat's going to be um, number 11 on my list. So we'll just put Shadow Cat off over the side over here. And so we got uh, Peter Rasputin, who is Colossus. He is my number 10 in my list. Uh, do I like Colossus? Yeah, he's probably, he's, he's been for the longest time like my favorite X-Men. Um, him, Nightcrawler, uh, those are the ones I really like. Um, and so I had a lot of high hopes for, for Colossus. And yeah, he has a hand size of six, 14 hit points. I love all the, the hit points that he has. I like being able to go find one of his cards and shuffle it back into his, his deck uh, whenever we flip to uh, his alter ego form. So that's great. And you can search for a copy of Organic Steel at the beginning and, and get that in your hand and get that going right away as good recovery. But I think where the reason why it's just that, that hand size of four um, love this, love this whole concept. Love Colossus. I like his hero kit. Uh, I like the fact that he gets that tough status card, but for some reason, when I play with Colossus and say, for example, I'm playing a multiplayer, it just, just, it just kind of feels like, um, my, uh, my teammate always seems to have a lot more choices on his turn because his hand size is bigger. And I know there's ways to make up for that. But yeah, just having that hand size of four is a little bit troublesome for me sometimes. And so I don't feel like I can be as creative. Maybe I have to be more creative when building a deck. So I feel maybe a little bit more limited is what I should say with Colossus. So, but I do like playing with Colossus, had a great uh, campaign with Colossus, and I did some really cool stuff, but a lot of it depends upon what you get on the table at the beginning of the game. If you don't get his his big upgrades out right away, it just feels like he is stuck in the mud uh, for a lot of the game. And so that might be one of the reasons why Colossus uh, is a little bit lower on my list is because of just having limited options and limited building ability with them and again i'm not an expert by any means that's just my personal opinion uh, colossus might be your favorite and i understand why he's fun to play with but yeah he just not as fun as some of the other ones okay next one is going to be logan i guess this would be number nine i don't have a list in front of me i'm just kind of counting it backwards but uh, wolverine recovery of six that's awesome uh snick uh, set up, search your deck, and discard pile for Wolverine's Claws upgrade. Put it into play. Uh, yeah, that's that's great. Search your deck and discard pile. They they errated that. That you know, believe it or not, that kind of knocked it down a little bit. I knew that there was something wrong whenever this hero came out, and, and this is Wolverine. Let me go ahead and flip to my Wolverine side here. So. Uh, I knew that there was something wrong with this because it just didn't feel right. Um, and then there was a little bit, there was a lot of discussion about whether you're playing him right, what, how to play a Wolverine um, until the actual RRG came out, which was long after it felt like after Wolverine came out. And so, you know what I did? I kind of shelved Wolverine until, because I like, I like to be able to follow the setup rules for, for the game. I think that's the most basic thing that you can do is, is to set up the game correctly. And it was wonky and it was wrong and it was kind of like play your own way. And I'm like, no, I don't want to play my own way when it comes to the setup of the game. Maybe during gameplay, play the way I want to, but there should be a definite setup. And uh, now we have to have an errata to go with Wolverine. So And you know, he's very powerful. He's probably one of the most powerful in the game. You know, I, I don't seem to do very well with Wolverine myself, and maybe it's maybe it's just me. Maybe maybe I'm broken. Maybe I'm damaged. But but Wolverine, not not as much fun as, as some of the other X in this wave. I know probably he might be some, the favorite of some in the entire game. And so I might just be completely off with that. But yeah, it was just like a bad first date with Wolverine, and I just haven't really kind of gotten over that so that's why wolverine is going to be near the bottom of the list um next now i'm getting into like heroes that i really 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 like and it's hard to separate the top from from 
these going forward. Remy LeBeau, I love uh, Gambit. Uh, a lot of fun. I like the fact that you can do some pretty cool stuff removing threat in his alter ego form. And I've had some pretty good games in multiplayer with uh, with old Gambit here. Yeah, I enjoyed, enjoyed him quite a bit. I love d three defense. Um, anybody that's got three defense, you're, you're going to be able to build a good protection deck and be able to pull off some stuff there. And he's really, you can do quite a bit, actually. He's pretty versatile. Throw card when you play an attack event, remove, remove up to three charge counters from here. That event deals plus one damage for each counter removed. I think there was a little bit of a discussion, too, about how to actually play him with his signature ally. There were some questions about that, so that was kind of kind of weird, um, the actual ruling on that. But, but anyway, he has a hand size a five in his hero form, which is good. He's got low hit points of nine. Um, it's hard to put Gambit this far down the list, but I just got so many, I got more heroes that I like to play with. So, um, place one charge counter here. Yeah. The charge counters are fun. Um, yeah, I really like Gambit a lot. So it was, it was a tough call between Gambit and Coloss and uh, Cyclops because they're kind of the, the they're almost kind of like even with me, but I decided just to put Scott Summers just a little bit higher. Uh, you may include X-Men allies from any aspect in your deck. I like grabbing allies from other aspects, which may have put uh, Scott just a slightly ahead of, of Remy there, of uh, Gambit. Concentrating, search your deck for a tactic upgrade and add it to your hand. So that's an option for additional resources or to get you know what you need an extra tactic out um, because his other side depends so much upon it cyclops side it says optic blast attack spend one resource of any type deal three damage to an enemy with an upgrade attached limit once per round and you get his visor on him and he's a lot of fun 10 hit points is good uh, two thwart one attack two defense but he can do a tremendous amount of damage too with his uh with his visor there so yeah cyclops is a lot of fun in fact he was you know out of the gate when it when i was playing x-men initially my first kind of run through with all the heroes he was my favorite right out of the right out of the gate whenever x-men got got released so so still high up there on my list but uh i guess maybe towards the middle i don't know warren worthington uh i like those you know, three sides to the, there's the alter ego and two different hero sides, similar to Wasp and similar to uh, Ant-Man and Wasp and Ant-Man are really high up on my list in the, in the game. So I like having a couple of choices to pick from whenever I flip uh, forms. And so Warren Worthington certainly scratches that itch. I'm going to flip. And so I have to choose which side I'm going to go to, whether I'm going to go to Angel or whether I'm going to flip to Archangel and just really cool some really neat stuff you can do as the uh, angel of death there uh, and Ariel you know there's so many uh, opportunities to play aerial cards now and you can really ramp up uh, some attacks with Archangel so yeah he's just slightly above Cyclops and Gambit and interesting how they put this acceleration icon on there. I, I like that, actually. It just adds a little bit more tension if you're going to stay in this really powerful form, Archangel. Or there's also cards that, uh, that work out well for Angel. Uh, after you play an aerial event, draw a card. So love drawing cards, like Angel a lot, is a pretty good hero. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about Betsy Braddock. I like... Um, I, Really, really fun to uh, flip between, and, and she's a, she's psionic, so there's um, some pretty neat cards that came out in this wave that deal with the psionic ability. I'm going to flip her over to her hero side. Uh, when you use one of Psylocke's basic powers, thwart, attack, or defense, flip one of her psi energy upgrades. Comes out with two extra psi energy upgrades. Now, she has a small hand size, but makes up for it uh, with with uh, having those resources on those cards 
that she begins the game with. And so I'm going to flip over to her alter ego side again. Uh, she says, um, set up, put your two Psy energy upgrades into play. Psy knife safe, face up. Exhaust Psy energy upgrade. Shuffle one psionic card from your discard pile into your deck. Uh, a lot of things to do. Lots of choices to make on your turn. You know, you're going to flip the knife. You're going to make it. You're going to keep it a knife. Or you're going to flip it over. Uh, yeah, really really like playing with Psylocke and I don't and I haven't really explored her enough I haven't played enough games of Psylocke so I might do like a week where I just play Psylocke and all the different aspects and do that just film a video I think that'll be I actually thought about doing that this week and I may do that in a couple weeks from now just uh, play an entire solid week of Psylocke and see what what different kind of builds I can make out of her, but just really interesting with the choices that you can make. All right, so this one's surprising to me. Uh, Jean Grey. She puts the Phoenix Force upgrade into play, restrain side face up, place four power counters on it. After you make a basic recovery, place one power counter on Phoenix Force. Has a hand size of six and nine. Uh, so this is Phoenix. I'm going to flip over to her hero side. She's got a thwart of three. Love it. An attack of one, defense of two, but uh, interesting how as that uh, Phoenix Force uh, counts down, that eventually you can flip her, flip it over, and now she's going to be three attack. So she, uh, a hero that starts out with the ability to thwart and then follow through with lots of attack, that just seems like, that's just so much fun. And like I said, I... I'm really surprised that Phoenix is this high on my list. And she wasn't initially. She was my least favorite of the ones that came out in that first wave. But it wasn't until a lot of the psionic cards started coming out. And you can uh, build more uh, with her keying off of that psionic ability that, uh, that I really started to like Phoenix. And so I plan to do like a whole week of games with Phoenix only too. That would be lots of fun. Nina Thurman, here's another one that wasn't my favorite at the beginning whenever I first uh, opened up the box that she's in uh, next evolution box but uh, after playing with her for a while it's just so much fun using those wild resources choosing a card in your hand swapping it with the top card of your discard pile and then the same thing over in her hero form or domino form um, when counting resources on cards, discard the top card of your deck. Each each printed icon twice, the, the wild one. Wild icon, count it twice. So there's a lot of um, combo-y things that you can do with her. Just in her hero kit alone. Choose a card in your hand, swap that card with the top card of your deck. So again, there's some swapping that you can do. You can do some planning. And you, you know what you're going to discard with her hero kit. So it's, yeah. I've, I've really domino has really grown on me uh right out of, at the beginning whenever she first came out a lot of people were talking about well it was the best this is the most powerful character in the game well i didn't really find that to be the case but now that i'm building with her and and figuring her out and understanding her more uh, I, I like her a whole lot more so yeah she's way up on my list here i think that's number three um and then we come to storm aurora monroe Begin the game with the weather deck. Love the weather deck. I feel a storm coming. Set up. Choose a support from the weather deck. Put it into play. So right at the beginning of the game, you get to uh, put one of these weather uh, cards out into play. And then uh, during her turn, it says weather control. Swap your weather support and play with a support of your choice from the weather deck. Resolve the special ability on the weather support and play limit once per round. So... Here we go. You, you start the game out. You're in alter ego form. You get to put out one of these weather supports. And then you get to immediately swap to another one and do the ability on it. And then there's other cards in her, in her hero kit that allow you to continue to do that. So she's always flopping, but swapping between weathers. It feels like she's really controlling the weather, trying to get things in her favor, trying to make things difficult for the villain you know okay now he's minus one attack and then you flip the form when you're in hero form now you're plus 
plus one attack and all of your allies are plus. so yeah just the uh the the puzzly feeling of of making sure that you're flipped into the right form and being able to control the weather it feels extremely thematic and so i really like storm a lot so yeah number two on my list and then number one is nathan summers um it says you may include player side schemes from any aspect in your deck. So player side schemes got uh, got introduced the same time that he did. And it says you may include player side schemes from any aspect in your deck. Soldier X set up, search your deck, and discard pile for a player side scheme and put it into play. So you get to begin the game with one of these player side schemes in play. And then his hero ability just plays right off of that. After Cable defeats a side scheme, ready him. So you put out a, the side scheme that you want. And some of them are really powerful. And he's able to defeat it, ready back up again, be ready to either attack or thwart again. Uh, it's a limit of once per phase. That's fine. I mean, it's two actions that he can do if he can remove. And, and there are some... In solo, uh, playing in solo, that he can um, take care of right out, or you know, first turn. You know, he can go find his weapon right away. And uh, so, yeah, Cable ends up being my favorite one. I've had some really fun games with him. I like playing him in leadership. Uh, I haven't played with him near as much in protection or aggression, so I need to really build with him and those both of those aspects to see how he does but in the justice and leadership i'm really enjoying cable so yeah, okay it turns out that cable so far and these can change like i could wake up tomorrow morning and just flip this whole entire list on its head or play a bunch of games with these cards and um like domino wasn't as high up on my list until i until i started playing with her and now that she she really went up the list so there's there's some Heroes that I've played with more than others, which that influences the way that, that I enjoy these. So some of them that I've figured out more than others. And, and so that's the reason why I put them in the list in the order that I did. So I'm just going to go ahead and put everything in the pile here. And I'll just lay everything out on the table. So Rogue, unfortunately, is um, here at the bottom. Let's lay these out and kind of look at the order. So Rogue is here. Next to Rogue is Shadow Cat. After that is Colossus. Then we've got Wolverine, Gambit, and Cyclops. Then we've got Angel, Psylocke, Phoenix, Domino, Storm and Cable. So of the X heroes, let's zoom in on that. These, this is the order in which I'm enjoying them right now. Again, you know, something could happen, and maybe Psylocke goes a little bit higher up on the list, or. You know, some cards get released in the next. We got we got two more heroes coming out in this X wave uh, this next week. We've got X twenty three and Deadpool. Maybe both of them come out, and I and I like one of those better than all of these. I don't know. We'll see how that works out. But at this point in my uh, game playing, these are the ones I've enjoyed the most: Cable, Storm, Domino, and then Phoenix, Psylocke, Angel. Cyclops, Gambit, Wolverine, Colossus, Shadow Cat, and Rogue. And if I was to divide them into kind of like fourths, that that feels really accurate where I'm at right now. So anyhow, that's just my opinion. I would love to hear your opinion. Is there somebody that I put too low on the list? Is there a reason why I should move Cyclops or or Wolverine or Colossus up a little bit? Uh, just leave that in the comments down below. Love to hear your thoughts on it too. Who's your favorite hero of these six that are in the game so far for the X? I call them the X heroes because we've got some X Force out there and we've got X Men out there and we've got more X Men on the way. 
uh, in the next the next wave um, age of apocalypse so that's pretty exciting so far seeing what's just the limited peak that we've got into that wave i'm really looking forward to that and kind of rounding out all of these x heroes i'm hoping for nightcrawler um and i'll just stop there nightcrawler is one i really really want i wouldn't mind having blink too that way we can do something with that teleport ability have two teleporters going around bouncing around in the game that'd be a lot of fun anyhow uh thanks for watching my video i'm the board game lawyer um this is my x tier list so to speak and uh what's yours leave that please in the comments down below or reach out to me uh, if you want to get in touch with me i am the board game lawyer at gmail.com uh, you can catch me on youtube you can catch me on twitch you can catch me on Facebook, you can catch me on Discord, Board Game Lawyer or BGL. Anyway, thanks for watching my video today. Hope to bring you another one again very soon. Take care, friends.